My videos are designed to help you relax or fall asleep. If you haven't subscribed to these videos, please do so before we begin. If you plan on falling asleep while watching this video, please take a moment to introduce yourself in the comments. I'm always curious to know what country everyone is from, so please let us know in the comments and share the time in your country. Thank you again and have a great day. Remember to switch off the lights, pour yourself a glass of water, make sure you lock the door, lie in bed and close your eyes. I was hanging out with my buddies last summer, and let me tell you, things got crazy after that. It was nearly midnight when I decided to head home, setting off on my long trek back. We were chilling at my friend Mark's place, which was quite a hike from my place. It'd take me about an hour to hoof it back, but I didn't mind. I enjoyed the walk. As I strolled through the dimly lit streets of our neighborhood, the cold air nipped at my skin, and a gentle breeze swept past me. The houses, usually bustling during the day, now stood silent and dark, their occupants fast asleep. The streetlights offered meager illumination, barely lighting up the path ahead. Suddenly, a flicker of headlights caught my eye as I approached the intersection of Oak Street and Elm Avenue. I glanced over my shoulder to see a car racing towards me at breakneck speed. Panic shot through me as I dashed off the sidewalk, desperate to avoid being hit. The screech of tires filled the air as I leaped out of harm's way, narrowly escaping the speeding vehicle. My heart raced as I watched the car speed past me, its backlights blazing red. But then, to my horror, it turned around and started hurtling towards me once more. With adrenaline pumping, I ran in the opposite direction, seeking refuge behind a lamppost on the sidewalk. I crouched there, heart pounding in my chest, as the car screeched to a halt nearby. The driver, hidden in the darkness, didn't utter a word. Fear gripped me as I fumbled for my phone and dialed 911. The driver must have spotted me because he backed up and sped away into the night. It was then that I noticed the missing license plate on the car, sending shivers down my spine. By the time the police arrived, the car was long gone. I did my best to describe it, but there wasn't much to go on. The officer offered me a ride home, and I gladly accepted, too shaken to walk alone. As I stepped through the door of my house, relief washed over me. But the events of that night lingered in my mind, haunting me as I tried to sleep. I never heard back from the police, and I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled over me. To this day, I still wonder about that mysterious driver and what could have happened if I hadn't managed to escape. It's a chilling reminder that danger can lurk in the most unexpected places, even in the familiar streets of your own neighborhood. A few weeks later, I found myself walking home late again, my mind still haunted by the encounter with the mysterious driver. As I made my way down the deserted streets, the memories of that night flashed through my mind, sending shivers down my spine. Just as I approached the same intersection where I had narrowly escaped disaster before, I saw the headlights of a car approaching. My heart leaped into my throat, and a sense of dread washed over me. Could it be the same driver, coming back for another round? As the car drew closer, my fears were confirmed. It was the same dark sedan, speeding towards me with a familiar menace. Panic surged through me, but this time, I was determined not to be a victim. I veered off the sidewalk and dashed into the nearest alleyway, my heart pounding in my chest. The car screeched to a halt at the intersection, and I held my breath, praying that the driver wouldn't spot me. Minutes passed like hours as I crouched in the darkness, waiting for the danger to pass. Finally, I heard the sound of the engine revving and the car speeding away into the night. I let out a sigh of relief, knowing that I had narrowly avoided disaster once again. Shaken but alive, I emerged from the alley and continued on my way home, my senses on high alert. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, but I pushed the thought aside, focusing on reaching the safety of my house. When I finally arrived home, I bolted the door behind me and collapsed onto the couch, my heart still racing from the adrenaline rush. As I sat there, catching my breath, I realized how lucky I was to have escaped and scathed once again. But the memory of those headlights, piercing the darkness with their malevolent glow, would haunt me for nights to come. 
I knew that I had come face to face with true danger and that I would never forget the chilling reminder of how fragile life can be. I used to have a job that required a lot of driving between cities. Sometimes, after a long day's work, I'd just crash in my car instead of getting a hotel room. It saved me money, and honestly, I didn't mind sleeping in the car. One night, I pulled over to the side of a quiet country road to catch some Z's. But my peaceful sleep didn't last long. I woke up suddenly and saw two guys standing behind my car, about a hundred feet away. At first, I thought they were just checking if I needed help. But then, one of them fired a shot at me. I freaked out and hit the ground, hearing two more shots. I didn't know if they were aiming at me, but I wasn't taking any chances. I scrambled back into my car and hightailed it out of there. As I drove away, I saw a pickup truck parked on the side of the road. I memorized the license plate just in case. When I reached a gas station, I called the cops and told them everything, including the truck's plate number. An officer came to the gas station and stayed with me for the night. Thankfully, the guys didn't come back. The next day, the police called to tell me they found the truck and arrested two guys with criminal records. Turns out, they were wanted for robbing people on the road. They denied shooting at me, but I'm pretty sure it was them. Even though they weren't charged for shooting, at least they were taken off the streets for other crimes. But that night on the country road will always haunt me. A few weeks later, I found myself driving down a similar country road, trying to put the previous incident out of my mind. But fate had other plans for me. It was late at night again, and I was on my way to another destination. The road was deserted, and the darkness seemed to swallow everything around me. Suddenly, my headlights illuminated something on the side of the road. As I got closer, I saw a group of three men standing near a parked car. Alarm bells rang in my head, but I tried to convince myself that it was just a coincidence. Maybe they were having car trouble. But then I remembered the pickup truck from last time. Could these guys be connected to the ones who shot at me? My heart raced as I debated whether to keep driving or stop and assess the situation. Before I could make a decision, one of the men stepped onto the road and waved his arms, flagging me down. Instinct told me to keep going, but curiosity got the better of me, and I slowed down. As I approached, I saw that they were all wearing hoodies, their faces obscured in the darkness. My gut clenched with unease, and I knew I had to get out of there. I pressed down on the accelerator, ready to speed past them, but then I heard the unmistakable sound of gunfire. Bullets whizzed past my car, and panic consumed me. I swerved to avoid being hit, my heart pounding in my chest. Adrenaline coursed through my veins as I fought to keep control of the car. I glanced in the rearview mirror and saw the men running back to their car, preparing to give chase. Fear gripped me as I realized I was being hunted once again. I floored the gas pedal and raced down the road, praying that I could outrun them. It was a terrifying game of cat and mouse, and I didn't know if I would make it out alive. But just when I thought all hope was lost, I saw the flashing lights of a police car up ahead. Relief flooded through me as I pulled over, the men behind me disappearing into the night. The police officer approached my car, and I told him everything that had happened. He assured me that they would do everything in their power to apprehend the suspects. Shaken but alive, I continued on my journey, knowing that I had narrowly escaped another brush with danger. But the memory of those hooded figures and the sound of gunfire would haunt me for a long time to come. A few days later, I received a call from the police. They had managed to apprehend the group of men responsible for the attack on me. I felt a wave of relief wash over me, knowing that they were no longer a threat. The police officer explained that they had been caught red-handed, attempting to carry out another robbery on a different stretch of road. They had been armed and dangerous, but thankfully, the police had acted swiftly and managed to apprehend them without anyone getting hurt. I thanked the officer profusely for his efforts and hung up the phone, feeling a sense of closure wash over me. It was finally over. From that day on, I made a vow to always be vigilant and aware of my surroundings, especially when driving alone at night. I never wanted to experience anything like that again. As time passed, 
The memory of that terrifying night began to fade, replaced by a newfound appreciation for life and a deep gratitude for the brave men and women who worked tirelessly to keep us safe. And although the scars of that experience would always remain, I knew that I had emerged stronger and more resilient than ever before. That was just a few months ago when I was still living with my mom. It still creeps me out just thinking about it. I was out walking my dog one night around 9 o'clock, and my cousin tagged along. My dog's a black lab, still a puppy, so I have to take her out multiple times a day for potty breaks. Usually, I stick to the back streets in my neighborhood for our walks. They can get pretty dark at night, and it makes me uneasy, but I've never had any weird encounters there during the day. During our walk, I noticed this old, beat-up blue Chevy passing by multiple times. It gave me a strange feeling, you know? The second time it passed us, I mentioned it to my cousin. Isn't that the same car we saw earlier? I asked her. Yeah, I was just about to say that, she replied. When we got to the corner near my street, the car showed up again, and this time, I couldn't shake off the weird vibe. I pulled my dog close to me, not wanting her to wander into the road and we decided to wait for the car to pass. But it didn't. I tried to peek inside, but all I could see was a dark silhouette of someone in the driver's seat. And it felt like they were staring right back at me, chilling. We decided to walk around the corner, and the car just watched us the whole time. When we finally crossed the street, the guy revved his engine and turned aggressively left. My cousin was freaking out, and she wanted to take a different route home. But that would have meant going three blocks out of our way, and we were only one block from home. We watched the car go down a couple more blocks, but then its brake lights came on, and that's when we bolted for the house. I practically dragged my dog inside. Once we were safe inside, I peeked out the window, but the car was gone. I felt lucky that they didn't know which street we lived on. After that, I stopped walking my dog at night. I made my boyfriend take over, no way was I risking another encounter like that. A few weeks later, my boyfriend had his own scary encounter. He was walking our dog, just like I used to, and it was getting close to midnight. I had warned him about the weird car sightings, but he brushed it off, thinking it was just a coincidence. He took our dog on her usual route, sticking to the back streets. Everything seemed fine at first, but then he noticed the same old blue Chevy cruising by. He thought it was odd but didn't pay much attention to it. As he continued his walk, the car passed by a few more times, and he started feeling uneasy. He decided to head back home, taking a different route just to be safe. But as he turned the corner onto a dimly lit street, he saw the car again, parked on the side of the road. My boyfriend's heart started racing, and he could feel the hairs on the back of his neck standing up. He quickened his pace, trying to get home as fast as possible. But then he heard footsteps behind him, getting closer with each step. He glanced back and saw two shadowy figures following him. Panic surged through him, and he broke into a run, pulling our dog along with him. The figures chased after him, shouting threats and obscenities. My boyfriend didn't know what to do. He couldn't outrun them, and there was no one around to help. He made a split-second decision to duck into an alley, hoping to lose them in the darkness. He stumbled over garbage cans and crates, his heart pounding in his chest. He could hear the men getting closer, their footsteps echoing off the walls of the alley. But suddenly, he saw a glimmer of light up ahead. He burst out of the alley and found himself on a well-lit street, with people milling about. The men hesitated for a moment, then turned and ran off into the night. My boyfriend collapsed on the sidewalk, gasping for breath, grateful to be alive. He managed to make it home safely, but the encounter left him shaken. We both realized how dangerous our neighborhood had become, and we decided it was time to move somewhere safer. We packed up our things and found a new place to live, far away from the dark streets and shadowy figures that had haunted us. And although we never found out who those men were or why they were following us, we were relieved to leave that chapter of our lives behind. I remember working the night shift as a security guard at this big office building downtown. It was massive, 
with tons of floors and long, endless corridors. My shift started at 10 p.m. and ended at 6 a.m. The building was usually dead quiet at night, except for the hum of the air conditioning and the distant traffic noise. One night, though, things got weird. I heard this strange scraping noise coming from the direction of the elevators. It sounded like metal on metal, maybe even some banging. I had to go check it out, so I started creeping down the corridor, feeling my heart pounding in my chest. When I got to the elevators, there was nobody there. I figured it was just my imagination, so I went back to my post. But then, out of nowhere, this guy appears behind me. He looked rough with shabby clothes and wild eyes. I was spooked, cause all the doors were locked, and there was no way he could have gotten in without me seeing. He started asking me some weird questions, like when the building opens. Then, he just walked off towards the exit. I reached for my phone to call the cops, but he heard it and turned back, pulling out a gun. He told me to drop the phone, so I did. He grabbed it and stuffed it in his pocket, then headed for the door. I was too scared to move, praying the cops would show up soon. Just as he was leaving, I heard sirens approaching. The guy turned back, looking pissed, but the cops stormed in and nabbed him. It was like something out of a movie. With the guy in cuffs, I finally felt safe again. The cops did their thing, but they couldn't figure out why the guy was there. All they found was a broken lock on the back door, so he must have snuck in that way. After that, the building beefed up security adding more cameras and hiring more guards. It was a relief knowing they were taking our safety seriously. But that night still gives me the creeps whenever I think about it. A few months after that scary incident, I was back on the night shift at the same office building. Everything seemed quiet and normal, but little did I know, danger was lurking just around the corner. It was around midnight when I heard a knock on the door. I wasn't expecting anyone, especially not at that hour. I cautiously approached the entrance and looked through the peephole. To my surprise, there stood a man in a delivery uniform, holding a package. I hesitated for a moment, wondering why a delivery person would be here so late. But then I figured it must be some urgent delivery for one of the companies in the building. I opened the door just to crack, keeping the security chain in place. Can I help you? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. The man gave me a friendly smile and said, Hey, I've got a package here for one of the offices. Can you sign for it? I glanced at the package, noticing that it didn't have any company name or address on it. My instincts told me something was off, but I didn't want to jump to conclusions. Which office is it for? I inquired, keeping my guard up. The man hesitated for a moment before saying, Um, I think it's for, uh... Smith & Company on the third floor. Alarm bells started ringing in my head. Smith & Company didn't have any deliveries scheduled, and something about the man's response didn't sit right with me. I'm sorry, but I can't accept any packages without proper documentation, I stated firmly, starting to close the door. But before I could shut it completely, the man's demeanor changed. His friendly smile turned into a scowl, and he pushed against the door with surprising force, trying to force his way in. Fear surged through me as I struggled to keep the door closed. I could feel his strength overpowering mine, and I knew I was in trouble. Just when I thought I couldn't hold on any longer, I heard footsteps approaching from behind. It was one of the other security guards, responding to the commotion. The man must have heard too because he suddenly let go of the door and bolted down the hallway, disappearing into the darkness. With shaky hands, I quickly closed and locked the door, feeling a rush of relief wash over me. I thanked my colleague profusely for coming to my rescue, and we immediately called the police. As we waited for them to arrive, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that had settled over me. The man had posed as a delivery person to try and gain access to the building, and I couldn't help but wonder what his intentions were. When the police arrived, we gave them a description of the man and explained what had happened. They assured us they would increase patrols in the area and advised us to remain vigilant. From that day on, I made sure to double-check the identity of anyone claiming to be a delivery person. I wasn't going to let another dangerous encounter catch me off guard again. A few days later, 
I received a call from the police informing me that they had apprehended the man who had tried to force his way into the building. It turned out that he was a known criminal with a history of burglary and assault. I breathed a sigh of relief knowing that he was off the streets and unable to harm anyone else. The police assured me that they would keep an eye on him to prevent any further incidents. With the culprit behind bars, I felt a sense of closure and safety returning to my job as a security guard. However, the experience had left a lasting impression on me, and I remained vigilant, always ready to respond to any potential threats. As time passed, the memory of that night faded into the background, replaced by the routine of my daily duties. But I never forgot the lesson it taught me about the importance of staying alert and trusting my instincts, especially in moments of danger. It was back in 96, when I was just a kid of 13, living in this small urban town on the outskirts of South Manchester. The place had this eerie vibe with its derelict Victorian cotton mills and all. It was a rough spot, let me tell you. One late September day, me and my mom were chilling at this small shopping center near what we called the Bear Pit. It was like this mini coliseum, and people used to sit on the circular steps there. In the middle, there was this pedestal where this homeless guy used to crash and chat to himself. He was a bit of a local character, harmless but stank to high heaven. So there we were, munching on pastries from the bakery, trying to figure out which shops to hit next. We overheard folks talking about how this guy had been snoozing on that pedestal for ages. My mom and I checked out a few shops and then decided to plop down on the steps before heading home. After a bit, we noticed some magpies landing on the guy and pecking at him. My mom, she nudged me and asked if I thought he was okay. But let me tell you, that smell was enough to make you gag. So we didn't want to get too close. And it seemed like nobody else did either. Next thing we knew, more magpies started swarming in, and they were going to town on the poor guy's face. It was like something out of a horror flick. People were screaming and freaking out. A few of us plucked up the courage to go check on him. What we saw, I'll never forget. The guy's face was barely recognizable, all torn up by those damn birds. It was gruesome, man. We didn't have cell phones back then, so the only thing we could do was find a cop. Thankfully, there used to be plenty of cops patrolling the area. When one showed up and saw the mess, he nearly lost his lunch and radioed for help. It was a nightmare, and it's stuck with me ever since. So yeah, if you ever see magpies landing on someone who looks like they're sleeping, don't just assume they're catching some Z's. After that day, things in the neighborhood just felt different. The usual hustle and bustle seemed quieter, more somber. I couldn't shake the image of those magpies pecking away at that poor guy's face. Every time I saw those birds, my skin crawled. It was like they were following me, reminding me of what I'd witnessed. I started avoiding that part of town, sticking to the main streets where it felt safer. But even there, I couldn't escape the feeling of unease. It was like the whole town was holding its breath, waiting for something else to happen. And sure enough, it did. A few weeks later, there were rumors circulating about strange figures lurking in the alleys at night. People said they saw shadows moving in the darkness, heard whispers echoing through the deserted streets. I tried to brush it off as just gossip, but deep down, I knew there was something sinister lurking in the shadows. It felt like a weight pressing down on my chest, suffocating me with fear. Then one night, as I was walking home from a friend's house, I felt it. That same eerie sensation of being watched followed. I quickened my pace, my heart pounding in my chest. I glanced over my shoulder, expecting to see nothing but darkness. But instead, I saw them. Two shadowy figures, lurking in the alley just behind me. I broke into a run, my footsteps echoing through the empty streets. I could hear them behind me, their footsteps growing louder with each passing moment. I didn't dare to look back again, afraid of what I might see. I just kept running, my breath coming in ragged gasps, my legs burning with exertion. Finally, I reached the safety of my home, slamming the door shut behind me. I collapsed against it, trembling with fear and exhaustion. I never found out who those shadowy figures were or what they wanted. But from that night on, 
I made sure to steer clear of those dark alleys, never again venturing into the depths of the night alone. I remember when I was around 10 years old, living in a small town in America. It was the kind of place where everyone knew each other, and nothing really happened that would make you think twice about leaving your door unlocked at night. There was this couple who lived next door, in their mid-40s, with no kids. They kept to themselves mostly, but they were always friendly whenever we crossed paths. They had this dog named Max, a big, friendly mutt who would sometimes wander over to our yard to play with our dog. One day, we noticed that we hadn't seen the couple or Max for a few days. At first, we thought maybe they had gone on a trip or something, but as the days passed and we still didn't see them, my parents started to get worried. The police got involved and they searched the couple's house. They found Max alone, hungry and thirsty, but otherwise okay. But there was no sign of the couple. Their cars were in the driveway and nothing seemed out of place. As the days turned into weeks and then months, rumors started swirling around town. Some people thought the couple had run away, others thought they might have been involved in something shady and had skipped town to avoid getting caught. But nobody knew for sure, and the mystery of what happened to them haunted the town for years. Their house sat empty and abandoned, a constant reminder of the couple who vanished without a trace. Even now, years later, whenever I visit my parents and pass by that empty house, I can't help but feel a chill run down my spine. It's a reminder that sometimes, even in the safest of places, dark things can happen and the truth may never come to light. Finally, after years of uncertainty, the police announced the results of their investigation into the mysterious disappearance of the couple from our small town. It turned out that the couple had been involved in some shady dealings after all. They had been running a small-scale drug operation out of their house, something nobody in the neighborhood had suspected. One night, things went south. There was a deal gone wrong, a confrontation with some unsavory characters, and it ended tragically. The couple was killed, their bodies disposed of in a remote area outside of town. The reason nobody had noticed anything was because the perpetrators were careful to clean up any evidence and cover their tracks. The couple's absence went unnoticed for a while, until concern from neighbors prompted the police to investigate. The revelation sent shockwaves through our town. People couldn't believe that such a thing could happen in our quiet community. It was a sobering reminder that you never really know what's going on behind closed doors. As for Max, the couple's dog, he was eventually adopted by a loving family in town. It was a small comfort in the wake of such a tragic event. The case was finally closed, but the scars it left on our town would take much longer to heal. It was a grim reminder that even in the safest of places, darkness can lurk just beneath the surface. It was the summer of 2006, and I was a 22-year-old woman living in a small town on Long Island. My parents always warned me never to get into a car or go anywhere with strangers, advice that would stick with me for life. One day, I was riding with my brother, Alex, in a not-so-nice part of town. We stopped at a gas station, and while Alex went inside to pay for gas, I got out to have a cigarette. As I stood beside the car, a man in his 40s approached me, asking for help with something. He wanted me to put my foot on the gas because he was having trouble with something in his car and wanted to see something. Instantly, my gut told me something was off, and I refused, saying I didn't feel comfortable. As I tried to open the car door to get back in, I realized Alex had locked it. Panic started to set in as I watched another man approach him and offer to help. I felt frozen in place, waiting anxiously for Alex to come out of the gas station. When he finally emerged, I was flooded with relief. I told him what happened, and he reassured me, saying I did the right thing by not engaging. He even joked that it sounded like I was almost kidnapped. The rest of the night, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. I didn't see the point in going to the police since nothing actually happened, and I wasn't harmed. But I couldn't help but wonder what could have happened if things had taken a darker turn. Being a small, petite woman, I knew I was an easy target. But I also knew I had to stay vigilant and trust my instincts. 
It was a terrifying reminder of the dangers that lurked just beneath the surface, even in a seemingly safe place like Long Island. After the unsettling encounter at the gas station, I decided to report the incident to the police. I provided them with as much detail as I could remember, including descriptions of the men and their vehicles. To my relief, the police took my report seriously and launched an investigation. They reviewed surveillance footage from the gas station and nearby establishments, hoping to identify the individuals involved. A few days later, I received a call from the police informing me that they had apprehended the suspects. It turned out that the men were part of a larger criminal operation involved in human trafficking and other illegal activities. Knowing that they were off the streets brought a sense of closure and relief. I felt grateful that I had listened to my instincts and taken action to ensure my safety. From that day forward, I remained vigilant and cautious, never underestimating the importance of trusting my gut instincts and being aware of my surroundings. It was a sobering reminder of the dangers that could lurk in the most unexpected places. So, back in the summer of 2008, I was just 16, chilling with my buddies Jake and Matt. We were all about hitting the woods near our small town for some camping fun. Now, where we grew up, the nearest town was a good 20-minute drive away, and it wasn't much bigger than a postage stamp. We weren't big fans of going there, especially since we didn't gel with the kids from that neck of the woods. Anyway, we packed our gear, including my tent and the one Jake and Matt shared, and set off early in the morning. No map needed. We knew those woods like the backs of our hands. Found a spot by a stream, set up camp, got a fire going, you know the drill. We were all set for a night of S. Mores and ghost stories. Then, out of the blue, this guy shows up. Let's call him Bob. Bob looked like he'd been living rough for ages. Despite our reservations, we offered him some grub and a seat by the fire. But Bob got too comfortable real quick, started asking too many personal questions, and I got a bad feeling about him. When I refused to answer one of his questions, he got agitated, and that was that. We spent the rest of the night on edge, worried Bob might come back. But when dawn finally broke, we breathed a sigh of relief and packed up to head home. But here's the kicker. Just as we were leaving, I caught a glimpse of Bob lurking around Jake and Matt's tent. I didn't waste any time. Yelled for them to get their butts out there. Bob bolted when he heard me, and we didn't stick around to see if he'd come back. We hightailed it out of there and told our folks what went down. The cops got involved, but they never found Bob. We carried on camping in those woods but we always kept one eye open after that. And to this day, I still wonder what the heck Bob was up to. A few weeks after that creepy encounter with Bob, things took a turn for the worse. It was another typical summer day, and Jake, Matt, and I decided to head back into the woods for some camping fun. But this time, things felt different. There was this eerie vibe hanging in the air, like something was off. We ignored it, though, chalking it up to nerves from our last encounter. As night fell, we settled into our routine of roasting marshmallows and telling spooky stories. But then we heard it rustling in the bushes nearby. At first, we tried to brush it off as just some critter scurrying around. But then the rustling got louder, closer. That's when we saw them, a group of shady-looking characters emerging from the trees. They were armed, with serious expressions on their faces. It was clear they weren't out for a friendly chat. Panic set in as we realized we were outnumbered and outgunned. We scrambled to grab our gear, but before we could make a move, they surrounded us, trapping us in our own campsite. Turns out, Bob was just the tip of the iceberg. These guys were part of some underground operation using the woods as a base for their illicit activities. They'd been watching us, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Thankfully, we managed to escape with our lives, but the experience left us shaken to the core. We hightailed it out of there and never looked back. It was a harsh lesson learned. Sometimes, the dangers lurking in the woods aren't just wild animals and spooky stories. There are real threats out there, and it pays to stay vigilant. The sound of approaching sirens broke through the tense silence of the forest. Relief washed over us as we realized that the police were finally here. 
We quickly explained the situation to the officers, telling them about the armed men who had ambushed us in the woods. They listened intently, their expressions growing grim as we recounted our harrowing ordeal. With a sense of urgency, the police sprang into action, organizing search parties to comb through the surrounding area in search of the criminals. We provided them with every detail we could remember, hoping it would help bring those responsible to justice. Hours passed as we waited anxiously, our nerves on edge. Finally, just as dawn was breaking, we received word that the police had apprehended several suspects matching the descriptions we had provided. Relief flooded through us as we realized that the threat had been neutralized. We thanked the officers profusely for their swift response and brave actions. As the sun rose over the horizon, casting its warm light upon the forest, we knew that we could finally breathe easy again. Though our camping trip had taken a terrifying turn, we emerged from the ordeal stronger and more resilient than ever before.